Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week, we are starting a new subject, and we are looking at and studying pride and humility. And you've got a lot of pride. And one of the main characteristics of pride is that you don't know you've got it. Pride blinds you and deceives you to the truth. And we'll talk more about that later. But that is why it is so very, very dangerous. Pride is actually the deadliest enemy. Pride is the deadliest. Because when you're in pride, you don't know it. Pride deceives you. You think you're humble. You think you're doing right. And all the time you are so wrapped up in pride. That is what makes pride the deadliest. So we must look for pride. We must learn how to recognize what is pride. What are the characteristics of pride? What are the signs of pride? What are the symptoms of pride so that we can address it and get rid of it? And it is something, unfortunately, we cannot get rid of it once and for all forever. And it's gone. No, it's something that as long as we live in the body in this world, we will have to kill it and crucify pride every moment. Moment by moment, pride needs to be dealt with. I'm, I'm remembering Peter when the Lord Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now that was humility. He was acknowledging God. He was acknowledging the deity of Jesus. He was acknowledging Jesus as the Christ or the Messiah, the promised one from God. But soon afterward, after he made that powerful statement and Jesus said, man did not uh, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but the Holy Spirit revealed this to you. God revealed it to you. Well, just moments later, Jesus started talking about his own death where he would be crucified and killed. And Peter comes to him and says, surely not, Lord, this will never happen to you. And Jesus turned around and looked at Peter and said, get thou behind me, Satan. And Peter did not realize in that moment, he was denying the word of the Lord. He was denying what Jesus was saying. He was arguing with God, I mean, he just had said that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. And then he's going to argue with him and tell him, tell Jesus that he's wrong. Notice the first statement, thou art the Christ, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That was a statement in humility, acknowledging the deity of Jesus. But moments later, all of a sudden he, his pride rises up. And he says, surely not, Lord, this will never happen to you. And he's rebuking Jesus. I mean, how dare you rebuke the Lord? So that's what he did. He rebuked the Lord. Well, that was pride. So you see, in one moment, you could say something in in true humility. And just seconds later, moments later, minutes later, respond in pride, just like Peter did. And so it pride is something that must be dealt with continually. We must always be looking for it. And we must always be purposely humbling ourselves. Pride is not pride is natural to the flesh nature. Pride is the way the flesh nature will always want to act. Humility is very unnatural because humility is crucifying the flesh. 
Humility is crucifying the flesh. So it's very unnatural and it's unpleasant. It really is unpleasant. Humbling yourself is uncomfortable. It's not comfortable. It's unpleasant. Just like crucifying the flesh is unpleasant. But it must be done. So, but the point is that humility is not natural. So if you just think, yeah, I'm basically humble, I'm pretty humble. Well, then that just shows how proud you are because unless you are purposely making yourself uncomfortable, humbling yourself, then humility is not a natural reaction to situations, to what people say and do. And so you are, if you are acting by the natural response of the flesh, then you are going to be responding in pride. Every time you respond to another person, to what they say or what they do, and you respond in the flesh nature, you are responding in pride because that is the pride is the flesh nature rising up. It's ugly head and saying, you know, all different kinds of things that we're going to get into later as the characteristics of pride, the way it responds in different situations. That's what we're going to be getting into. But the flesh nature rising up, that is pride rising up, exalting itself. And it's uncomfortable to crucify it. It's uncomfortable to be humble. So. You may think you're humble, but if you are not making yourself uncomfortable, then you're not being humble. If you're not constantly making yourself uncomfortable and crucifying yourself, then you are not humble. You got a lot of ugly, stinking pride in you that you got to kill. So do I. So does everyone. It is the human sinful flesh nature that we are talking about, that we are crucifying. And so I just need to emphasize that to you again and again, because you've got to be on guard. You've got to be on guard. You've got to be diligent. You've got to be watchful for this ugliest thing in you called pride. Yes. So the word humility means to lower, to reduce arrogance and self-dependence. To make lowly in mind, to lay low. Now, what is pride? It's the opposite of humility. Pride is high. It means to raise up and to exalt. And especially in regard to exalting self. Then we also began comparing what humility is and what humility is not because there is a false humility. We read that in Colossians chapter two, verse 18 and verse 23. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility, delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. So, Do not let false humility disqualify you. There is a false humility, and if you've got it, it can disqualify you. And then Colossians 2.23. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body. But they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. So bottom line, there are things that have an appearance of wisdom, but they are false humility. They lack value. So right there we see two scriptures mentioning there is a false humility. Now, let me tell you this. One of the characteristics of religiosity is false humility. Religious traditions that are really not scriptural, but they are what we think is right, what we think we should do. A lot of that has to do with false humility. The Pharisees, for example, any Christians have the same temptation to fall into the same trap in being religious, but not being truthful or humble. And so 
there is a religiosity that a lot of Christians practice thinking they're humble, but they're not. They're actually very, very proud. And this is really a pair. I don't know what's the right word paradox or something, but um, a contradiction. The people who think they're the most humble are probably the most pride proud. I mean, the people who think they're the most humble are often the most proud. So thinking you're humble is actually many times pride when you don't understand true humility. They are thinking in line with a false humility. They are thinking in terms of false humility. As Colossians 2.23 says, what has an appearance of wisdom, what has an appearance of humility, it says self-imposed worship, false humility, harsh treatment of the body. Well, we said humility is not talking bad about yourself. It's not insulting yourself. It's not putting yourself down. It's not degrading yourself. And there are people who in pride think they're being humble by talking bad about themselves, by degrading themselves or by saying, I'm so unworthy. Oh, Lord. And the, and people don't usually say that to other people. They say that to God. They're saying it in prayer. Oh, Lord God, I'm so unworthy. You know, that is the stupidest thing to say when you're a Christian. Because the blood of Jesus has cleansed you, washed you and made you clean and made you worthy. You wear the robe of righteousness now. And so there is a false humility there. Now, we also said yesterday, pride is independence from God. Pride is independence from God. Pride is also denying what God says about you. And humility is total dependence upon God for everything. Humility is acknowledging God in everything good. Humility is acknowledging what God says about you. And like I said yesterday, you may be able to agree with all these things I'm saying and say, yes, Cherry, that's right. Amen. I agree with that. But the problem is, and the fact is that even though we mentally agree with these statements, moment by moment through the day, when you're in conversation with someone at work, in the office, or at home, and you let your pride rise up, getting in the flesh is getting in pride. And it's forgetting these things when is when we are allowing pride to manifest and rise up. And I even mentioned at the close of the program yesterday, if there's anything bad that you do or that's in you, it's you. If there's anything good, it's God. The good that you do and anything good about you is because of God. Anything bad that you do or anything bad about you is you. Just remember this. Like I said yesterday, it's a, a lesson a five-year-old can understand. The bad is you. The good is God. Give God all the glory for everything good. But blame yourself for everything bad. Say, I messed up. I screwed up. That's just the lousy uh, flesh nature. And forgive me. I was wrong. And we'll get into that later, too. And then another statement that we made before closing is when people say things like, well, I don't have much, but I've got my pride. You know, some people say, well, I just got to keep my pride. No, you don't. You better crucify that ugly pride. And if you don't have much, but you've got your pride, well, both of those are wrong. You should be blessed by the Lord and you should be getting rid of all your pride. And we also said yesterday, humility cannot be related to poverty. 
where people say, well, this is just our humble home. What they mean is it's a poor house. It's a cheap house. It's not very nice. It's not very pretty. We don't have very much. Not having much does not make you humble. If that were the case, all the street people in the world living in the gutters would be called very humble. No. Humility is not in your possessions, what you've got or what you don't have. Not Humility is not based on your economic status, whether you have money or don't have money. Because the opposite, you know, people say, well, if you're living in a poor house, a cheap house, then you, they think of that as humble. But you know what? The problem is, is that they also look at the rich and they think immediately then, well, the rich are proud. No, not necessarily. Pri- riches and wealth do not make you proud. They can be a cause for pride, but in itself, it's not what makes you proud. And poverty and lack and want and need is not what makes you humble. You've got to separate this idea of rich and poor From pride and humility. That's what I'm trying to show you. Humility is not having nothing and being broke and poor. Pride is not being wealthy. Being rich and wealthy doesn't make you proud. It's all in the attitude of the heart. And there are people that have no money. They're beggars and yet they're proud. There are people who live in the lower economic status and they're full of pride. But so not having money doesn't mean you're humble. You can be full of pride even when you don't have much financially or materially because pride is of the heart, not of the possessions that you have. And the same thing with wealth and riches. You can be wealthy and be proud, but you can be wealthy and be humble. It's not in your possessions. It's in your heart. And I've known people, hopefully you do, people who have got money, people who are wealthy, that have, you know, a lot of money and good, beautiful, lovely homes and vehicles. And they are sweet, loving people. They do not lord it over you. They are givers to the poor. The Bible talks a lot about wealthy people who are good. The rich people, Abraham, Job, they were very wealthy and they were good. People that served the ladies, the women that followed Jesus around, ministering to his needs. They were wealthy women, but they worshiped the Lord. They got on their knees before the Lord. They thanked him and they gave of their wealthy substance to the Lord and to the ministry of the Lord and to the poor. So there are the stories of the wealthy in the Bible that are good, righteous people because they love God and they love people. They do not consider their possessions making them great and somebody special, but they use what they have to be a blessing to minister to others and to worship God with their wealth. So that is a true humility so that you can be wealthy And have great riches and be humble if you love God and love your neighbor as yourself and you're generous to the poor and you don't make let your wealth make you think you're superior. And in the same way, you could be poor and not have very much. But if you still think you're superior because of your knowledge, maybe you don't have much money, but you think you know everything. I mean, we all know people that think they know it all. We call them know-it-alls. Well, that's pride. You may not have much money, but you think you know everything. That's pride. And so just bottom line is wealth or lack of the your wealth, money, has no relation to whether you are proud or humble. You can have no money and be proud or humble. You can have great wealth and be proud or humble. It's all in the attitude of the heart. Now, let's move on from there 
And I want to talk about the ugliness and deadliness of pride. The ugliness and deadliness of pride. Pride, which is self-exaltation, is the root of all sin. The root of all sin. The root of all, A-L-L, all sin. Pride was the cause of the first sin and rebellion, the rebellion of Satan, who was called Lucifer. He used to be originally one of the beautiful archangels in heaven serving God. But he rebelled against God. How? By rising up against God. Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah 14 verses 12 through 15. How you have fallen from heaven. O morning star, son of the dawn. Some translations actually translate, translate that. O Lucifer. Lucifer was the name of Satan before he sinned. Lucifer was Satan before he sinned. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will. Now notice all the I will, I will, I will, I will. Anytime that you try to purpose to do things on your own, independent from God, then you're in pride. Remember, pride is independence from God. Humility is dependence upon God. So when you do things, you say with God, you, and, and you don't need to always add these words, but from your heart, you need to know it's always the motive of your heart that it's with God's help. We're going to do this. I'm going to do this. God will help me. We'll get it done. And so that's the humble attitude, but independence is pride. And so notice all these I will, I will, I will statements. I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend, raise up above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself. Oh, boy, those are key words. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't say those words, but it's the heart attitude and motive. So whether you say it or you don't say it, it's what is the motive. And even if you don't say it, if it's the motive, it's there. It's wrong. I will make myself. I will make myself like the most high. Verse 15 says, but you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Now, I'm trying to show you what is the point. Pride is the root of all sin. Pride was the cause of the very first sin, the very first rebellion, which was Satan, Satan's rebellion against God. But let me show it's not only the cause of Satan's rebellion, Pride was also the cause of the fall of man, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, let's start in verse 1. Genesis 3, 1 through 6 or through 7. Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree 
in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4. You will not surely die. Now remember one of the main um, understanding of what is pride. Pride is denying what God said. Pride is denying what God said. So right here, he is exalting himself above God again to the woman presenting to her this idea that what God said is not true. Denying what God said. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, I'm running out of time and I need to stop right there, but I want you to see pride was the root of this and we'll come back right here and pick it up tomorrow to show you this is because of pride. Pride is self-exaltation, denying God, denying what God has said. And that was the cause of the first sin of man. Now, join me again tomorrow. Walk in humility today. Give God all the glory. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.